What's up, everybody? We are live streaming from the Baker Builds Laboratory and doing it off my phone because I could not get my GoPro to talk to my Wi Fi. So, doing it off the phone, I might actually try to move you guys again to a different way. What's up everybody? I'm working on trying to get this set up with my phone. Hey, I love your videos from Mason. Well, thank you, Mason. I appreciate it. I'm doing good, Lanny. Is it coming clear for you guys? I feel like I'm really in your face. And I want to switch it to, there we go. I think I got it now. HHH said hello. Let's see if I can get this fixed a little bit more. I have my own small lure company. Do you have any tips? Yes, don't give up. Keep going. What up, Max? I think biggest tip <clears throat> for that would be yeah, don't, don't give up on it. It takes a lot of time. But, I mean, I'm still, my lure company isn't a whole lot to show for, but as long as you enjoy doing it, that's what matters. Love your work, man. You have helped me a lot with techniques. Right on. I'm, I remember doing this last live stream, and I can't remember. It's like the messages go away. I don't remember how I did it last time. But last time I had it set up differently too. I'm also going to rotate my phone. So please hold. This might be a little bumpy for you guys. Orientation is locked. Rotate device back. Oh lord. Okay. Well we're going to leave it like this. I made one of the frogs from your page. It turned out really good. I caught an 8 pound pike. Very nice. That is awesome. I'm glad it makes me really happy to see when somebody's utilizing that pattern. I've got, I still haven't got it finished yet. The, uh, uh, like little shad wood swim bait. I kind of got distracted by some other projects. Is the live stream coming through solid for you guys? Let me know. Uh, I was, when I used to live stream, it was inside my house. So I had good Wi-Fi connection. And now we're in the shop, and I'm kind of struggling to get stuff to work. I've used that frog pattern from Mason right on. Max said yes. Mason said so much. Well, we're going to do an easy pattern on jerkbait. Coming in good from Lanny. Right on, Lanny. Thank you, sir. Let's see. Hi, I'm a wannabe. I don't know what that means. All right. Here's a jerkbait we're using. I think it's a 110 style jerkbait. It said slow sinking, but it's more of a, it's very quick sinking. Uh, but that's okay. You like places like the Ozarks or you're fishing deeper waters. I think a little bit of quicker sinking action is good. Uh, I've already prepped the bait. I just haven't wiped it down with the alcohol yet, which is what I'm doing now. And then uh, we'll be ready to get to work painting. Do you make the plastic baits? I do not. I get blanks. Cody said you were my favorite. Cody, thank you. Uh, I get, there's multiple sources for them online. If you search pl or lure blanks, I recommend avoiding... Uh, like stuff off Amazon unless you find like a good seller for it. I've got, that was like my first set of blanks was from there and I wasn't too happy with the way that they worked. Do you know Marlene Bates? I do not personally know him, but I watch his videos, yes. I really want, I don't remember how I did it last time. What's up, Rob and Randy? What up? Trying to get it to where the chat stays because your messages come up and they disappear. And it's so frustrating if I miss them. Anyways, I'm going to flip this camera around and hopefully this works and we can start painting this bait. First thing I'm going to be doing 
is a base coat of opaque white. And then we're gonna go from there. I have pretty cool smallmouth pattern going and I keep messing it up trying to freehand the side details, but I'm getting close. Yep, I've got a ton of baits that I have messed up trying to do new patterns. I've been wanting, I've been making loads of baits right on. What kind? All right, I'm going to, where's the option to flip this camera around? Or can I not flip it around? I'm so confused. There it is. Okay, there we go. Eventually, we'll get this going. Poppers, right on. That was the first bait I ever made was a popper. How long have you been making lures? Um, several years. I started making them when I was in high school and then kind of got away from it for a little bit while I was in college just because I didn't have the time or the space to do it, but I'm doing it again now. So I've got the jerk bait. I've got some of the opaque white loaded up in the paintbrush. I'm going to give this whole base a whole bait a nice coat in that. This is my second month making lures, right on. It's pretty fun. It's uh, an addicting hobby. Like you make one bait and then once you catch that first fish, you get hooked, pun intended. Do you sell your lures? I do, on my website, bakerbuildsusa.com. I'm actually, I think this is going to be going on there along with, I just finished uh, well, it's not finished, finished, but painted two of these. It's got a little bit of red, a little bit of gold, and some black. And now we're going to do uh, more of a chartreuse one, which is going to be good for clear water. Uh, I got the base coat of white on there. I'm happy with that. I'm going to clean out the brush, and we're going to switch over to our chartreuse color. Twenty-two of you watching. I hope you all are doing good. It's Monday night. This is my uh, Mondays are my weekend. So I'll work tomorrow, but bait making in the meantime. I've also got uh, the brown trout part two of the lure of the trout painting series uh, will be coming out this week. I got the bait pretty well done today. And then uh, I got to finish editing the video for it. And then that'll be done. Painty lures helps a lot with stress. Also, it's been a rough time lately and it helps me get off, get my mind off of things. Absolutely. It's been, I think it's been a rough time for everyone this year. Very weird year to be alive, that's for sure. Hello, watching in Brazil. A big hug, right on, that's pretty cool. What's your job? I work at a place where we fix trolling motors. Uh, what are you cutting your paint with? I'm just running the paint. It's just as is out of the containers, the Createx. Um, I've got a couple of them that I do thin, but most of them, it's just straight out of the container as is. Um, I've had, I notice when the paint gets colder, it's a little bit thicker and it doesn't want to run through as good. So in my shop, I'm trying to get this whole back half insulated and sectioned off. That way I can keep it warm. Uh, what is H? I'm not sure what you mean. And I think that's in Spanish. I can't. I don't know what it says. I apologize. Uh, but I see a thumbs up, so I assume it's good. What time is it in Brazil, out of curiosity? It's just after six here. What is your favorite lure? Uh, it would be, I mean, I got a bunch of them. I love doing topwater baits, fishing them, because of that action you get. Is the paint water-based? Yes. Uh, the Createx is, most of them, water-based. Let me flip this camera around because I think it looks a little bit better. Yeah, water-based uh, Createx. And then we're getting ready to do, uh, it's like a neon yellow or the chartreuse color. Uh, but yes, water-based paints, I think they also, or that's the candy. I've got a couple of these which are not, well, that does say water-based, but it's like a dye color. These are a little bit different. I do like the way the colors are from them, but 
as you can see up on my wall, most of my paints are the Createx. That's just kind of what's available at my local hobby store. I, I paint two. I use polyester paint. The peacock bass color pattern is very good. Yeah, I actually want to do the peacock bass. I think that'd be pretty fun. Favorite pattern? I, that's a hard one to say. Um, I like ones that are unique. I mean, shad patterns are... Uh, oh, that, that one's not even... Shad patterns, I think I do a lot more just because it's a very common pattern. My favorite one to paint. Um, I really like the disco one, which I will flip this camera back around. The disco one, so it's got all the different colors in it. I really enjoy painting this one. It's just fun. It's kind of messy. You can, it's not really any particular placement for colors. I think that'd probably be my most favorite one to paint. Um, but I mean, I really enjoy all of them. Thanks for the heads up on Olive Green Deep Amsterdam Ink. Yeah, I really like it. I'm glad to, it's, I need to live stream more because I love talking to you guys and hearing more people uh, saying when they're using something that I recommend. Where are they available? I get mine from Hobby Lobby. I think Amazon has them as well, which I actually want to start a series on YouTube, buying paints from Amazon uh, and testing them, seeing how they work, but that costs money. So we'll get to that eventually. Uh, can you just use regular paint, not airbrush paint and airbrush? You can, and I actually do use, uh, where is it? I actually just showed this in my trout painting video. So this is just a normal, uh, I can't think of what the word is, acrylic paint, a normal acrylic paint, but you have to thin it down. And I use just water. So what I do is I'll put it in its own little container with some water. And you want it to be about the consistency or thickness of milk. And it works pretty good. I know some people, which I want to make a video on it, but I don't know it that well. Some people will use uh, alcohol to mix with it or like a special paint thinner. It helps the paint to dry once it hits the bait rather than hitting and running. So it's kind of tricky the way I'm doing it. It's probably not the best way, but it works for me anyways. So yeah, you can. Use Hobby Lobby 40% off coupon. Absolutely. Uh, what do you use to cut wood? Saws, hand saws. Disco looks awesome. Thank you, Lanny. And... think I'm good on the color or er, on the comments you may have covered it but what pressure do you shoot at most of the time it's around 40 psi is what I shoot with like what we're doing right now is right at 40 if I'm gonna do something really fine or detailed you can drop the air pressure down but most of the time for me right around 40 psi so I'm gonna do a nice coat of this chartreuse color and we'll probably do two coats of it I'm gonna cover the entire bait in it I want it to be super neon. Awesome, thanks, not a problem. And this is also the new airbrush I got. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on it eventually. I broke my other one in this one. I wanted to try it. It's got this like little micro. I don't know if you can hear the difference in the air. So tighter. And you open it up more. So it has like a on the airbrush micro air adjuster, which is kind of nice. Um, and I don't know, I think it's my the pump I was using rather than the airbrush itself the other night. I was filming another video and I was having a little bit of trouble with it, but I think it was from the pump I had in there mixed with the water or all the paints being very cold. In your opinion, bright colors like lemon yellow, green, and orange are good for bass. Here in Brazil, we have good results with these colors. Yeah, absolutely. For us, it's, uh, or at least how I fish, I use the bright colors and like murky water. Where it stands out. What's your full cleaning procedure when changing colors? I will show you as soon as I'm done uh, with this color. I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer. I'm actually first, I'm going to clean the camera lens. It looks like there. I don't know what this color. I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer really quick, and then I will. Uh, we'll be back. A 
Lenny said, picked a good time for jerk baits. Absolutely, I'm probably going to be painting a ton of these over the next couple of months. And uh, painting gun cost, I think this one was 35, 20, it was between 25 and 35. I can't remember exactly. I do have a YouTube video on uh, the colors that I have. I'm sorry, the airbrush kit that I was using until I broke the airbrush. Is the fishing good where you live? Uh, if, yeah, no. Right where I'm at is, uh, well, especially this year, I've been overfished, but there's also still some good fish. I think I'm in mid Missouri, so like the closest big lake to me is Lake of the Ozarks. And that's pretty fun. I haven't fished down there as much as I'd like to. Hopefully that's going to be changing this next year. I'm gonna show you really quick how I clean out the brush in between colors, and then we'll move on to our next color. So I'm gonna flip this back around. So what I have is an old coffee jar with a hole cut in the top of it. And then I've got these little tubes of water. And you can just get these. I got, I think I got mine from Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but I'm sure they're online too. So what I do, and this one doesn't have a lot, there's still some of that paint down in there. I will, I'm gonna try to do this where you can see it. It's kind of dark. But I'll knock out that paint with the water that's in the tube. So now you can see most of the paint's already gone. And I think that's better than sitting there running it till the paint runs out, especially if there's quite a bit of paint in there. And then I got one of these guys from Harbor Freight and then I'm just going to run whatever paint's still in there out. And then I'm going to put some more water in there and run that through. Whoop! Sorry, punching the camera. And something else you can do if you get it clogged or it's really being stubborn, and I don't know if this is good or bad, but I do it all the time. Uh, if you, like, plug up the tip of this, and then you can... Uh, excuse me, you can uh, give it air pressure and then pull back like you're painting. See how the air is going backwards? It's pushing out more paint that's up in this front part. I, I do that a lot if I get something clogged or it seems like it's clogging and it kind of backs stuff out. It's a little bit of a quicker fix than taking the whole airbrush apart. And then I would just run whatever water's still in there out and then paper towel if there's any any paint still on the inside the cup. Nice tip. Thank you, fish hard. Okie doke. Next thing we're going to do. Better than discussing disconnecting my brush and running it to the sink every three minutes to change colors. Yeah, having little tubes of water is a huge makes you know it is a huge help. And let's see what are their comments. I like that. Here in Brazil, we use color for baits that design for snook fish. It is all about black with red and big eyes. Have you used it or painted one like this? Um, black with red eyes. I mean, I, I have never fished for snook, so I don't know on that. I actually don't even know what a snook is. But, I mean, for bass, you can really, almost any color is going to work. And I think a lot of it's if the fish are hungry and you're fishing in the right spot. Now, I do think for us, clear water... You want something that's more natural or realistic looking, murky water. You just want something really bright to be able to, for the fish to find it or something that's dark to make a good silhouette of like a bait fish. So that's where murky water, I would throw a really bright one. If I'm not catching anything, I'd throw a really dark one, like a dark black and blue. I mean, a black and blue is a super popular jig color in this area because a lot of the water is pretty murky. So a lot of people go for that. Sorry for so many questions. Not a problem. That's why I'm live streaming. Because I love talking to you guys and I love answering questions. Here in Massachusetts, I'm guessing, it is bad. The fishing slowed down a lot. Yes, it's getting slow here in Missouri, too. Um, and I think you'd ask if the fishing's good. I got that one. Okay, I'm caught up on comments. A lot of people do that. Yes. Yep. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm trying to decide. So the whole bait's going to be the chartreuse. And then I'm going to be doing like a shad dot. And I think if I do a little bit of dark green on the top, put a stencil pattern on, and then do some black, that might look pretty cool. I think that's what we're going to do on it. And uh, actually, before we do that, no, we'll do that later. I think we're going to put a little bit of neon orange on the belly as well. So it's kind of like similar to a fire tiger pattern. We just won't have the stripes going down the side. 
uh, and the color I'm going to use for the top. Somebody mentioned it earlier, the Olive Green Deep Ink. I'm asking everyone for an airbrush for Christmas. Heck yeah, me too. <laughs> you ask it from everyone, you get 15 airbrushes. I'm wanting to get, uh, I call it like a Cadillac, or like a really nice airbrush, but we'll see when that happens. All right, we're using the Olive Green Deep Ink. I'm gonna flip the camera back around. Hopefully I'm not making you guys sick moving this camera around so much, but I like this, that way you can see really well what I'm doing. I also wonder, okay, never mind. There's uh, different settings. I'm just wondering if any of them look better than the other. Hands down, the best teacher on the web. Thank you, North Fork Fishing. What's up, brother? I just jumped on YouTube. Notice you were live. Yep, been live, uh, I think, around, since around 6. We're working on an easy lure pattern. Also, thank you, uh, Robert Jones. Means a lot, a lot to me, man. So doing this olive green deep, I'm going to take this up to the gill plate just a little bit. You're going to get four, but that means more brushes for colors. Absolutely. And what I'm doing on this one, which is why I'm like, you know what? Let's live stream. And I'm also not spraying this till it's the full darkness of the green. If that makes sense, I'm keeping it pretty light. I'm going to carry it just down the side here a little bit. Uh, I don't want it to go very far, but we're going to kind of hit this ridge right in here. And I hope it's in focus for you guys. Going for a fire tiger? Going for a fire tiger? Uh, kind of. Similar colors. I think we're going to do a little bit of orange. Instead of doing the stripes like a fire tiger has, I think I'm just going to do a stencil pattern. Uh, and then kind of like a shad dot. I don't know. We're just kind of making it up as I go here. I finally got around to try some of the stencil plating armor. Did you see the post? I sure did. Uh, I can't think of the guy that started doing that. It's a pretty killer idea. That's smooth painting. Um, Hatsfield, yes. Yeah, I actually saw, so I saw yours and then I saw one of his posts that he did. Uh, He's crazy talented. Like, it's insane, the stuff that man, that man comes up with. But, yeah, the armor stuff is pretty cool. I haven't really tried that yet. Favorite place to get blanks? There's a bunch of different sources. Um, I hate referencing certain places to people because I found, for most places, uh, I'll order... I get blanks from different places. I like the way the square bills run from one place, the jerk baits from another. Well, actually, I haven't found a really good source for the jerk baits yet. I like these, they just sink too fast. Um, so I don't want to tell people a place and then they go order a blank that I haven't tried yet and it sucks. You know what I mean? Uh, I am working on getting some Baker Builds blanks available for you guys. Biggest bass is 5'5". Five, five. Thank you for that question, Cody. And it was caught on... Not this exact one, of course, but uh, the black and blue lipless. So it was this pattern, same blank, and I caught it actually last November. Which I'm sure 5.5 five is small for a lot of people, but... Uh, that was the first time I ever tried it. Not bad for picking up airbrushing in March. Absolutely. I did a pike swim bait. I need an airbrush to do the scales, and I've been waiting to do it. Airbrushing will ask North Fork Fishing. He's started back in March and that's all he posts now <laughs> it's very fun uh, I make very good results on fire tiger black stencil back head yep that's what we're gonna I'm actually gonna hit this with a hair dryer and we're gonna put some black on there wow that's amazing I didn't get to see that lipless you just held up was that a war pig blank nope this is just a standard blank from one of the websites uh, but it has super loud rattles. Like when you're in a boat fishing it, it's insane how loud it is. You can hear it coming up. I think, and then the dark black and blue. Just broke mine last week. 7.41 on Little John that I painted. Dude, congratulations. I was hoping for a 7 this year, but I really actually didn't have a very good year of fishing. I didn't catch. I don't think I caught anything 
over five, actually. I think I had one that was right at five. But it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't the best year. I also didn't fish as much this year as I did last year. It was, it was a, a weird year. I think everybody can agree with that. It was like my, my little ponds close to my house that are public ponds that I would fish almost every night or several times a week. Uh, they were just smashed, like slammed with people this year. If you buy an airbrush, get ready to spend all your money on paints and all kinds of stuff. I look at everything in stores and think that would make a good stencil. Yep. I have some of those lipless blanks. Right on. Check Amazon. They sell them there. Sell what? And I'm loading... Actually, before I load that up, let's pick our stencil pattern. So maybe I won't even do... I'm trying to think. If I want to do the shad dot or... I think what might look pretty cool is if we do this stencil. People won't buy my lures. I make wood lures, top water, and swim baits. How can I get them out there? I say just keep posting. You keep posting stuff, it's eventually going to work for you. I mean, I, I guess it, nothing's a promise, but at least with my YouTube channel, when I you know, make only one or two videos, only some people see it. But when I keep consistently posting videos a lot more people see it and especially like in the lure building painting world i think it's kind of difficult because you can only reinvent the lure so many different ways uh but i think if you have context to who you are and why you're building baits that's what helps sell them if that makes any sense at all if i never posted anything or did anything besides here's the finished product of my bait uh unless it was an absolutely killer design i don't know that i would sell that many of them and it's actually, I haven't really sold a whole lot these last month or so, but I've really been focusing on YouTube rather than making baits to sell. Okay, so here's our two options. My biggest is four or five. Nice. Post them consistently. People don't mind except here and there. I do see one guy that sells lures all the time. And to be honest, his painting is not that good. It makes no sense, but it's what it is. Do you get my comment on your other video about color combination? Disregard that. I started watching your videos. Uh, uh, if you recently did it. I don't always get notified on comments, which is kind of annoying. 48 people watching. Hit the likes. Yeah, hit the likes if you guys are enjoying the live stream. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you a couple options for stencil patterns. because I said I really don't have a plan for this one. Uh, we could do this one. So we'll do this as option A. It's like that ribbon. We can do option B, which is just kind of like a normal circle, or option C, which is this one, which is kind of like a really webbed one. So comment which one of those options you guys want. Again, option A. Option B is the circles, and option C is like a really small, like webbed one. Also, I had it was like a warm day here in Missouri, and I had like a fly infestation. It was quite absurd how many flies there were in here earlier. Would look awesome with splatter pattern. Yeah, I thought about doing the splatter too, but I don't know. A looks sick. A, A, C, uh, opposition, A, I have that at home. I love it. Right on. Option A, sorry. C, those all look cool. Where do you find such good stencil material? A lot of them is craft stores, and I'm actually working on putting together a, a Baker Builds stencil package. Uh, I've found a source for this that doesn't have glitter on it, so I'm going to be buying a bunch of that in bulk. Uh, a is common. C all the way. C, A, I think I'm seeing it's right between A and C. I'll wait for two more comments, and then we'll go with one of them. Ribbons. Yep, ribbons is short answer. A lot. Both of those are ribbons. I will buy if you do some package right on Amazon. They sell crankbaits and a lot of swim baits. I sell mine for around seven dollars. Is that low or high? That's what I sell mine for. I mean, I guess depending on what it is exactly. A C C. Boy, you guys are about even. I think we might go with C think we're going to go with C. Let me make sure I got one long enough. I should have checked that beforehand. C because we all have A. <laughs> you want to see what this other pattern looks like. There's a longer one. Ooh, we can do it 
wrapped that way and that'll kind of give it a cool effect too. So then when I get my stencil package put together, I'll make sure this one's in there too. They have C at Hobby Lobby. That is correct. I think that's where I got mine from. At Baker Builds. Were you trying to ask something? So I'm going to wrap it, I think, like that. Then it'll look cool. Is Mui being hello? I can't remember or thank you or something like that. I don't I don't know Spanish. But I can't very good, I think is what it is. The people on your Facebook group are so nice. Yes, I love the tackling the dream group on Facebook. If there's 48 of you watching, if you paint or make lures and you're not a member of the Tackling the Dream group on Facebook, I highly recommend it. We got both extremely talented people, people that have never painted before, and uh, everyone really helps each other out on there. I have hardly seen any sort of negative comments, if any at all, which is really nice. A lot of, like I was a member of another lure painting group like before I started the Tackling the Dream one, and people on there were rather ignorant. Like you post something like, hey, this is my first bait, what do you think? And people would like, like tear into you for it being your first bait. It's like, I mean, I get, you know, constructive criticism, but also it's like, all I did was post a picture and said I painted my first bait. <laughs> People kind of rip into them. Uh, but yeah, Tackling the Dream Group on Facebook, pretty cool. I still, man, I've got so many things I want to do and just not enough time. I'm wanting to do a contest on there. I just have not got around to do it. And I also want to start doing like tackling videos for YouTube, maybe call it Tackling the Dream Thursday or Tuesday or something like that, where I just get on there and scroll through people's pictures. I'm new here. Will you tell me the quit of the group? Do what? It's Tackling the Dream on Facebook. Um, so it's a private group. I, it should be linked on most all my YouTube videos if you're having trouble finding it. There we go. Got it wrapped up. I'm going to put it back on my little display stands. Also, if you guys have these stands, once these little things get worn out, they kind of pop off and it's very annoying. But if you take a small zip tie and zip tie it around it, it helps squeeze it and keep it tight. That's a nice little uh, helpful, helpful tip from Zach. Making sure I'm not missing anybody's comments. I just ordered some sample packs of Wicked Colors with white on. I'm wanting to do videos from stuff from Amazon. Can you shout out my buddy, uh, Ricasso? Is that how you say it? We're painting in South Jersey. This is Blind Fury Lure Painting, a.k.a. HD Lily. Right on. Good tip on the Gators was just dealing with that. Yeah, super annoying because the rest of it is still good. But when that wears out, about driving insane. Thank you. I hate that. You're welcome. I've also got... So, I've already prepped for the giveaway on Tackling the Dream or the Winners. I have one I'm going to put in like a giveaway on there. I have another one I'm going to do a giveaway on YouTube for you guys. And then a third one for myself I just haven't opened up yet. Those have been sitting there for like two months. No, I have good intentions, but not enough time in my life to accomplish everything I want to in a day. But that's okay. We're live streaming. We're painting baits. Having a good time. At least I hope. And there's 52 of you watching. Can you sub to my channel? Uh, I don't know if I can from the chat. Uh, no. It just gives me the option to <laughs> remove you, and I don't want to do that. Uh, maybe if you send a link to me or comment on one of my videos or something like that, I'd be more than happy to. Where can I get that stand? I get mine from Harbor Freight. Amazon has them as well, and they are called Helping Hands. I used to paint all fancy, but now I just paint simple patterns. My Bass E Gizzard Chads look simple, but not so much. Yep, it's uh, you can get real crazy with this stuff, but also the simple patterns work just as well. So we got the stencil on. I've got the opaque black loaded up in the brush. And I'm going to try to keep it really light, at least up here on the sides, because I don't want this to be 
really dark. How about Backwater Lures? I've been wanting some of their swim baits ever ordered. Uh, I really like Backwater. I've not had any issues with them, and pretty well all the blanks I get have been good quality from them. So I highly recommend. What do you think? How far down the side should we go? Maybe just a little bit for a big chunk of it, really lightly if I, I can. Hey man, love watching you paint and learn new te techniques. Give me a shout out, Fritz. Heck yeah, thank you, sir. Right on. But also don't, don't holler at me if you buy a blank from somewhere and it doesn't work. I haven't tried all the blanks from everybody, but at least the ones I have from them have been pretty good quality. What PSI are you running on standard Createx? I am right at 40. Okie doke. Let's hit this with the hair dryer. I'm pretty sure I missed a couple comments. Your paint sessions look fun and relaxed. I've got 185 baits that still need sanding. <laughs> yep. Especially building them take a long time. All right. I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer. So if you're wearing earplugs or uh, headphones, I mean, might want to turn it down. All right, Randy. I might actually go just a little bit darker. That way there's a nice sharp contrast between that chartreuse and the black. I missed the beginning. What was the base color? I did a base coat of white and then this neon yellow, which is, I think, uh, yeah, fluorescent yellow, but I call it chartreuse, but I mean, I think chartreuse might be a little bit more green than this is, but it's pretty darn close. All right, hair dryer one more time, and then we're going to take it out. So it's just white, the chartreuse, and then uh, the black. I just put it in the how to paint a trout. Okay, perfect. My tag name is Parrot Head, but would you recognize me because better as Westport Custom Lures on Instagram? Yes, I actually struggled trying to find you because I was searching for Westport Custom Lures, but I, I think you used it in your hashtags is how I found you. <laughs> but yes, I do remember you. Whoop. All right, let's see what this bad boy looks like. Hey, not too shabby. Kind of almost looks like a weird camouflage. Ooh, now see, I was going to, ooh, I don't know. Decisions have to be made. I think I might darken the head, but leave the back as is. That looks pretty cool. Just got video idea, your paint shop setup. Yes, I actually want to do a YouTube video on that, and I'm here hopefully soon because it's going to be getting colder and colder, going to be redoing my entire shop. It's a pretty chill group. Just keep it clean. If nobody is chatting for a while, then maybe ask intu intuitive question. Yep, this... Uh, I see no monitors to ask. I don't know what that means. I missed the beginning. What was your base color? I think I answered that. Leave it. Okay, perfect. John B. and Gomo. Looks like a small mouth candy. Looks sick. I would leave it too. Keep it light. Sick. Yes. I just got my first batch of lures and stuff to paint. I've airbrushed on tons of things, but not lures. What epoxy to use? I'm starting off with KBS Clear Diamond, uh, which is a great one. I, I still have KBS I use. Right now I'm using, for the most part, is Illumina UV, at least on the blanks. I don't really like it on my wood baits. It just is a little bit different. I use two parts epoxy. Bubba Wood says, looks good, man. 
KBS aerosol or dip? Uh, I always dip. I have not tried the spray yet. He wants to know that I don't even know how to pronounce that. Adequate of the group chat. I don't know what that means <laughs> either. Ari looks awesome from Isaiah Baker. What's up, brother? It looks fire. Perfect. I'm going to darken up around the eyes. And then we're going to darken up just... There's this one spot right here where that clamp was. So I'm just going to kind of lightly hit that, but we're going to leave the rest of that. The rules of the chat, keep it clean. And that would... No spamming and keep it clean if kids are watching. And I think for YouTube purposes keeping it clean too. I didn't realize that was a thing on YouTube. I'm just real lightly hitting that till I get it where I want it. Do you ever do your own handmade lures? Yes, and I'm going to be getting more woodworking videos out. Uh, but absolutely, I would paint the whole back black. See, I thought about it, but I just like the way that looks. I think I'm gonna leave it on this one. How'd you go about changing a color of a bait that's already clear coated without messing up the bait? Um, I wouldn't. And unless you're talking like a store-bought lure. Um, I just joined your Facebook group. I've been painting a few years now. Right on, for years now. For musky bait, how much epoxy do I need? Do you know about 10 inches? Um, I use... See, musky, I, I always fish for bass. I, I know musky are going to be way more aggressive, which I actually caught my first one uh, a month or two ago. And it was already on a bait that was pretty well torn up. You should do more wood lures videos. Absolutely. I'm going to have more coming out. I'm trying to do them where I have free patterns for you guys, and that just takes time to make sure all that's together. But don't worry. There will be more wood building videos, especially the colder it gets, because I will not be spending time outside. As far as a clear coat goes, I don't know if I ever finished earlier. I use KBS dip, so it's like the can full of it. Uh, I've never tried the spray can. Right now, for all my plastic blanks, I'm using Illumina UV, which I have a YouTube video on that with a link uh, to where I get it. Super cool company. The people there are super nice. Uh, highly, highly recommend them. I'm actually going to be ordering some more here very soon because I'm about out. As far as uh, musky, I'm not exactly sure. I've only caught one my whole life on a bait that I painted that was already torn up. Uh, I would say assume thicker better as far as clear coat because of their teeth. So you might be able to do two coats of it. Something like that I might try and I don't have it out here, but it's going to be a YouTube video here soon. I'm going to be doing a building video. So then, so how to build, carve out of wood, a bait, and then we're going to be a video on painting that one, and a video on how I clear coat my wood baits, because I use a two-part epoxy for that. Uh, at least with my experience, the two-part epoxy is a little bit thicker, which is why I don't use it on my plastic blanks, because it might affect the way some of those swim, if you know what I mean. Do you sell blanks? I'm actually going to here very soon. It's in, in the works. Uh, hopefully, I, I mean, it didn't really answer your question or give you a good way to go. For me, if I was going to be building a bait targeting musky, I would use maybe a two-part epoxy or do two coats of Illumina UV or do two coats of whatever else you're using. Uh, it doesn't really answer, answer your question, but backwater outfitting, carry white. Uh, I missed something. Good work. Baker Builds, keep the videos coming. We're enjoying the informative content. Thank you, Dean. Are there color shift paints for hard baits like in soft plastic baits? I use, uh, it's watered down. It's like these acrylic paints. And they don't really color shift like I would want them to. So I'm not for sure. That would be something I would like to experiment with as well. First live, glad I caught it. What do you think on doing maybe white or silver outlined gill plates on this one i might this one i'm gonna do a little bit of orange hello from tennessee what's up dustin baker builds do you do overspray from the store bought baits and is that illegal like paint over store bought blanks i mean as long as you're i i don't see how that would be illegal if you're buying a store bought blank or bait 
and you repaint it and sell it. I mean, they, I, I don't think that would be, unless you're selling it as their name still possibly could be a problem because I'm just trying to think if somebody bought my baits and then was selling them on their website as a Baker builds bait, but also like they paid the price I asked for it. So I don't know. That's a, that would be a good Google question. I'm looking forward to your wood carving. I am wanting to make fly rod size lures from wood. I, me and uh, my buddy, Matt, he was in my first vlog video. He does a lot of fly fishing. So I'm hoping to do that too. Those clog for me. How do you thin those? The Createx? Uh, I just use water on thinning stuff. I use interference pigments for color shifting. I will have to check that out. And Etex three coats on a wooden saltwater lure. Recommended from Parrothead. Okay. I think I got, I didn't miss anybody's comments. And 58 of you watching. So welcome everyone else that's joined. Here's the bait we're working on. Uh, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of neon orange on the belly. So this is kind of like a weird inverted fire tiger pattern. So we're going to do, I don't want to do the whole belly in orange. I just want to kind of do up to this first, which I don't know if that's even showing nicely for you guys. I'm going to do orange up to this first eyelet, maybe a little bit past it, and then on the belly a little bit. If you real, resell something that you improve by painting it, then you should be painting paying an excess tax on it, or I have been told by the internets. So if you repaint, yeah, see, I don't know how that kind of stuff works. Just sell, sell stuff to the homies then, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's also, I think it would be uh, more expensive to buy store-bought baits and then repaint them rather than just buying blanks. I have epoxy resin and hardener, super gloss. I just don't know how many grams do I need from each. Uh, I have no idea on most of the time the packages tell you if it's a one-to-one. -one. And then I always recommend mixing a little bit more than what you think you're going to need. It really sucks if you're clear coating a bait. Uh, I'm going to be doing this neon orange. I'm going to put some of that in the bait or in the airbrush. If you're clear coating a bait, depending on different types of epoxy, some set quicker than others. Uh, I always mix up a little bit more than what you need if it's like a two part or there's a ratio to it. Actually, four coats I put on before I paint so I have a nice smooth surface for painting. Oh, yeah, for wood baits. Absolutely. Yep. And it's also good to have them sealed. So I got the neon orange loaded up. We're going to do this on the belly. Okay, brother, thanks. All right, I want it to be a little more neon, neon than that. I'm gonna hit the hairdryer, do another coat. I'm using the point two right now, Tom. All right, gonna do another coat. Do you clean the eyes prior to fishing the lures like where the swivel rings go, or does it matter as far as the way they run? If there's clear coat in there, I do, absolutely. Uh, as far as the paint, I'm usually not too worried about it because it'll come off. I think for, well, especially for myself. If I'm selling the bait, I try to clean it up a little bit more, but congratulations on your work and the channel. I will recommend to other Brazilian customers do accompany you too. Right on, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. There's the orange. What do you guys think about doing some orange on the gill plate or just leaving it? Does the two require thinning? Uh, right now, I'm not thinning anything other than stuff that's like pearlized. I might put a couple drops of water in there. Um, but as it's still run fine, so it's the point, or 0 0.2 mm. Running at 40 PSI with Createx, it's like room temperature. When it got cold the other night and my paints were cold, I was having trouble with it clogging. 
so at that point, it was either I needed the paint to be warmer or I needed it to water down. I put a couple drops of water in and it ran just fine. I know because it's different for a lot of people. Some people are in a shop, some people are in a garage or your basement where it's temperature controlled. Uh, I'm hoping to get this, at least the back half of my shop insulated so it's not freezing right now. There's nothing, uh, so it's gonna get very cold. And I saw Passion Beat said, leave it orange on the gill from Gomo. Uh, if you're just starting out, do you need the high dollar Iwata? Um, I mean, if, uh, if you have the money, I would say absolutely. I mean, a nicer airbrush helps out for sure, but also all the airbrushes I'm using are 20. I think the most expensive one I have is $40 and it's working. However, I want a really nice one. So I will get it at some point. John B asked if I'm from the Midwest. Yep. Just outside of, well, I'm about an hour outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, finish the orange on the bottom. I'm think I was gonna leave it like on both sides instead of running all the way down, unless a bunch of people want it. Uh, it's another yes on the gill plate. I think we're two and O, oh, so we might do a little bit of orange on the gill plate. Fifty-two of you watching. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. It's like I have all these friends all over the place. So what I'm gonna do. And this has got the micro adjuster. I'm going to knock the air pressure down so it's coming through a lot lower. I could do it on my pump that's below the table, but I'm trying to practice it on this to see if I actually like it on the brush before I do a video on the brush. How long have you been spraying your own lures? Uh, several years. Get a mini split? I'm not sure what that is. I've been making bait since high school. So that was kind of like 2012, I guess. But I kind of got away from it for a while while I was in college. I didn't have the space. And then I lived in an apartment for a while and definitely couldn't be running a table saw in there. Eight years. Okay, here's another idea I have. You guys can let me know. What if we did red just on the very outside of the gill plate? So it's like orange to like a blood red right there. Or should we leave it as is? This bait's just kind of whatever. Uh, I use a Neo by Iwata. Works great. 50 bucks. Yep, I'm wanting to get... So my very first airbrush I had or I got, which... I don't know where it's at. Uh, it was a Badger airbrush. It was a bottom fill. And I really liked it other than the issue of having all the different containers for the bottom fill. Uh, but I'm looking. I can't remember which one it is. It's on Amazon. It's the Badger something. It's like a black one. hundred and something dollars for it. Uh, so de the one airbrush will cost as much as the three I have sitting right here. Can you make a bass pattern tutorial? Yes. So I'm wanting to finish the trout series, which I have going right now. This week, you guys will get the brown trout video. And then we'll do, I think it's the cut cutthroat brook trout. And uh, then I want to do a bass series. So a large mouth, do a baby, a baby large mouth, and then do a uh, adult large mouth pattern. And then kind of same thing for like striped bass, smallmouth bass. So yes, absolutely. I'm in Sullivan, Missouri. I would uh, do the red on the gill. My dad is watching from Randy. And what's the time? Yeah, Central Standard Time. And I'm seeing quite a few people saying yes on the red. Hello, Randy's dad. We are working on, I think it's the 110 style jerkbait. Mine is EST. So what time is it there? I think I'm working or pushing seven o'clock right now, if not a little bit after. And I'm gonna do, so this is the candy 
I'm gonna flip this around so you can see it better. The heating and cooling unit for your space mini split. YouTube it. Oh, okay, I got you. I'm gonna write that down because I will 100% forget. Mini split. By the way, what type of airbrush do you use? We were just talking about that. Uh, right now I'm using the Master Airbrush. I'll have to look to see what the number is for it. Uh, it's the Master Airbrush something. Uh, I've been using the Vivo Home, but I recently broke, and oh no, this, this one's still good. I broke the tip on my little one, and I got a new tip for it, but it's not working. So I don't know if I bought the wrong tip or what. But that's what I've been using. I know I missed a couple comments. Anybody spraying a lure along with him? I still want to make some sort of 806 for Randy. Yep, so you're an hour ahead of me. Uh, here's the red I'm going to be using. It's a Candy 2O. It says Auto Air Colors. Transparent, water-based, and it's like a dye color. So this stuff is a blood red. And I love it. It's super, super, super like blood red. Uh, very, very, very thin. So we're talking about the Createx kind of clogging or you have to water it down. This is very far from that. I mean, it's like, like I'm not, I, all I did was tilt it and it put, <laughs> I mean, it's like stupid thin. Also, if you get it on your fingers, literally looks like you were bleeding. A lot of times my wife asks me what I, like how I cut myself. I'm like, oh, nope, I was just using paint. Think about getting my first airbrush, so I'm watching to learn about the paint schemes to practice as a beginner. Yep, I would say, well, I guess this one's a little bit harder if you don't have that stencil pattern. But we've only got white, chartreuse. I did do a dark green, black, orange, and now we're going to do a little bit of red. What is it early over there? I'm doing it because of Baker. Right on. Uh, I got this tightened in quite a bit, especially since this is a thin color. Because I'm really wanting... Let me move this back. Like, yeah, a nice thin line like that where I really have control over it. And I'm just going to hopefully quit shaking the camera all the place so you guys don't get sick. Do it on the side of the gill plate. I'm going to just kind of fade it into that orange just a little bit. Yeah, son. And then maybe, I think somebody mentioned earlier or recommended or said I should do some on the belly too. So we're going to do that. Questions? but don't have much time. Sorry, I missed something. I'll have to catch up with the comments here in a second, guys. I think that works for me. So with this paint, even though it is water-based, I still like to run a little bit of Windex or some sort of airbrush cleaner through it because it is like a dye. I really want it to get out of the brush. And I know I've got several comments I've missed. Your videos are great and make 2020 a little better. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It would look awesome if you put a netting back over it and sprayed red on it like the back. It would look sick, I think. Yeah, that actually would probably... I might not do that on this one, but if we did that underneath of the green, that looked pretty cool. Uh, slamming with questions. Oh, I got you. Doing a toad I made out of wood. Nice. Uh, I think, I think I'm, I actually am caught up on questions. I tried making your frog and it looks pretty awesome. Thanks for the video. Right on. Tip, use Createx bleed checker to stop color mixing. I did not even know that was a thing. Like when you spray it on the bait, it mixes or what? I usually, well, if I hit it with the hair dryer between, uh, usually... I don't really have a problem with them mixing. I guess when you layer them, though, they are going to change or affect the color, which is why I layer colors. Love these videos, Zach. Keep them coming. Thank you so much, Carl. Common, let's smash that. Oh, come on. Let's smash that like button. 
I'm also, so upcoming videos are the trout series, and then I got to do a spray painting one where we spray paint a fishing lure. Uh, I want to do, I need to start live streaming like once a week. I think that would be pretty cool. Now, so I was trying to str live stream from my GoPro, but it wasn't connecting to my Wi-Fi because I'm further away from my house. Uh, but it seems like, I guess it's working good on the phone. I'm getting comments and it says there's people watching. So I think it's working pretty good. What kind of hooks do you recommend uh, if you're selling something cheap, good quality, but not too expensive? It won't hurt the wallet. What I use and I've had extremely good luck with is, uh, I will show you here in just a second. So when I dumped that red paint, some dried paint, fell off of the cap and went down inside there. So I'm digging that out. Um, I use Eagle Claw, and it's like the galvanized ones. Uh, if you get, I don't know what the other ones are called, but they're like brown. Boy, I'm all over the place right now. Uh, I use these. They're Eagle Claw, razor sharp, and these are just red ones I got, but the other galvanized ones, I don't have one of those out here, but uh, those have been really good for me. I run those on all of my normal blanks. If I'm using like a big swim bait or something like that, I'll put these on there. They're a lot bigger and they got the wider uh, hook thing to it. I definitely recommend if you're selling them, it's worth spending extra money on your hooks or your split rings. Because if you have a killer bait, somebody buys it, and then those, you know, the hooks instantly rust or they bend, or your split rings snap, well, they probably won't be a returning customer. So I think it's worth spending a good quality on that to have an overall uh, high quality bait. And I've got this water I'm refilling, and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, he said 5-5 five, five on the blue and black lip list behind him. Oh, somebody asked. Laser sharp, right? Yes, sir. Lo love streams, that'd be interesting. <laughs> is that what my title is? Or did I accidentally? It's supposed to be live streams. Um, but yes, razor sharp. And I, you can get these at Walmart, too. Eagle Claw, laser sharp. And then just make sure they're like the galvanized ones and not the brown ones, because the brown ones uh, rust like after your first time using them. Looking at the wall of lures, also me, wow, and I only have three on mine. I've been doing it for a while though, and I paint. Like I don't really watch TV, and the this is like my hobby, and I'm working on growing a brand. So any spare time I have gets. I'm in this chair or in the shop working on stuff. Let's see if I can get the rest of that knocked out of there. And then we got to get the eyes put in this bait. And this one will be done. Um, I love the live videos. Thank you for reading the comments. Keep up the great work. Baker, thank you so much. Sorry, guys, but got to go. Love the videos. First time live stream. Thank you, Joe, for hanging out. And, yeah, my PB, Chris, is 5'5". Five, five. And it was caught on, I'll show you again really quick, and then we'll get this bait wrapped up. It was caught on the black and blue lipless, which I have some available on my website if anybody wants them. Uh, not this exact bait, of course, but same blank, same pattern. And I actually caught it last November. So it's been a year. Time flies. Mm. Uh, Parrothead said colors blend better if you're, if you paint wet on wet, unless you really want a strong transition. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do live streams once a week. That's kind of what I was thinking now that it's working on my phone. because so I've been struggling. I was trying to do it off my GoPro, but if it's works on my phone, and it's coming through good for you guys. Then problem solved. Okay. Let's do, I've got, I'm thinking either dark black eyes or where are they? Or these eyes? I'm gonna grab two options out for you guys. Or since we put that red in there, and then I will let you guys vote. I don't think. I don't think just straight red. Do I have any yellow? 
Okay. Here's the two options. I'm gonna flip this around because I think this camera looks better. We're gonna go with option A is just a solid black and red. Kind of get an idea. And then this one's got, it's like an orangish red with some silver. So option A is just the solid black and red. Other one is orange and silver. Definitely do more live streams so I can watch while I paint in the evenings. Yes, and I also like live streaming on YouTube better than I do on other social media platforms. And uh, what blank is that lipless? I don't know what the actual name is of that blank. It is from Backwater Outfitting. No. When are you going to put that rat downloads stencil on the website once I get around to making a video for it? Uh, Johnny said A. Is that Raw? Raw Nava? Eh, sorry if I put your name. Said black and red, which would also be A. Joe said B. Do B. I think we're tied right now. Use a homemade fan brush for your rat lure. A fan brush. Black and red from Hector. B. Black and red. I guess we're going to go black and red. I think there was more. Uh, it's always about dead even. Red eyes. <laughs> D. Okay, we're going to go with option D. Okay, you meant B. No, no. See, you're spamming. You're, you're messing up my head. We're going to go with the first one. I think there was more for that. See, so, right, actually is somebody else that's, like, near me to count and actually keep track of them a little better than I do. So we're going to go with these. I think these will look pretty sick. And maybe these actually might make a little bit more sense since there's no silver on them, whereas the other ones had the silver. Uh, and there's no silver on this bait. But I put my little drop of super glue. Black and orange looks better. Got to run, Baker. See you on the next live stream for sure. Thank you so much. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but it's 7077. <laughs> but yes, thank you for hanging out. And I need to start streaming more often because you guys are pretty fun. Uh, what I should have said is you can use Createx bleed checker under over candy 2.0 to stop color bleeding. I gotcha. Ooh, I'm going to go this way with these. Beauty, nice work. Thank you for the live feed. Johnny, thank you for hanging out. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way that's looking. And we're going to go ahead and pop the other one in on this side. Oh. Gomo said that looks good. <laughs> and Joe said that's an angry elf. <laughs> yep. Oh, something else fun. I got to find it. But I found, last year, I found this ornament that was shaped like a fish. And I think it's wood or some form of wood or plastic. And I want to turn the Christmas ornament into a fishing lure. So that'll be an upcoming video, too. All right. Did you work out the weight on the swim bait from your blog? Is it sinking like you want now? For the most part, Dale. Uh, that will be coming up. Uh, hopefully soon. I'm going to get this trout series finished. If I was a fish, I would eat that from Max. Paris would also give me a look at Westport Custom Lures on Instagram. I am following you on there. All right. There's a nice... Ooh, I actually have an idea. Please hold. 30 seconds. You can pick up one of these bad boys on Amazon, and then let's turn it like that. Oh snap, look how fancy that is. So there is our finished bait aside from hooks and clear coat. I'm thinking some red hooks would be pretty sick on this, so I will probably use those red ones I was just showing you. I believe those are, yep, size six. So I'm gonna clear coat this, I'll put size six hooks on it, and I think the red ones would look pretty cool. 30, 29, 28, 27. Not sure exactly what that means. Did I miss something? Johnny Wishbone said, awesome. Show the gnome. My little sister got that for me. Pretty cool little dude. She said it looks like me when I'm going to be, when I get older. 
All right, that is the finished bait, everybody. Uh, I will get it clear coated, and if I can remember, I'll try to show it in the next video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, say, you said give me 30 seconds. Well, I appreciate you counting. Sorry. I, uh, I'm. Whew, but that was funny now that I see what's going on. I got to find the ribbon rod, the stencil. Yep, I'm going to put that in with my stencil package too. Oh, the bait's so pretty, it would scare the fish away. Uh, I know, bud, thanks. That was for the other gents. You said 30 seconds was more like nine. Well, I thought it was actually further away, but give it away. I'm going to be giving away the trouts. I'm going to be giving away three of these monsters with a display box. So I think we will wait on doing a giveaway until we get this one wrapped up. But that's the uh, rainbow trout. If you haven't checked out that video, go check it out. It was my most recent upload. Uh, up next is going to be the brown trout, cutthroat trout, and then the display box. And we'll move on to some more videos. Then uh, Karen Baker said, nice. Thank you, Karen. Gomo said, been watching you, sir. Yes, I'm ready to win the trouts. Right on. Have you ever painted with just a brush? Um, that's what a lot of that trout was, but I do want to do a video on painting with just a brush. That was what my first, uh, first baits were brush and spray paint. And several people have recommended these markers. I got to go look at the comments to see what they were. Um, but I want to try those too, cause that'd be pretty cool. Many thanks. I want to win that bait. Woohoo. Paint job is so sweet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream here. Dean said the bait is fire. Thank you. John B. said thanks for the stream. That was cool. Not a problem. Joe, I keep calling you John. I, I apologize, but Joe said thank you. You guys are welcome. I'm going to, I got to see how things go, but I really want to start live streaming more because you guys are uh, super active on the stream, which makes it really fun, especially for me. So uh, I'm going to try to stream more. Maybe at some point we can get it like scheduled so we know which dates yes i do have an instagram baker builds all right everybody i'm gonna go and kill the stream i will catch you later have a phenomenal week be on the lookout for the brown trout video it will be coming out this week and then i'll hopefully i'll try to stream again because this was fun can you show us the bait with the clear coat in the next stream absolutely i'll get it clear coated robert i will see you later peace everybody have a good one and uh